Okay, we have a lamp page. Um, obviously not a lot of fun to play solo. A little too interactive, a little too fast paced for my taste. Um, the interactivity comes largely from the cards, but uh, otherwise uh, it's also still kind of tedious just in terms of the amount of the amount of uh, trying to figure out, hey, what's my best possible attack, and there just there really isn't much in the way of strategic considerations in this game, except for maybe, you know, oh, let's plan for you know the summer carrot grab. Uh, so there's a couple of turns where you have to kind of you want to have all your equipment prepared for whatever you want to do, but outside of that, uh, you largely. Are just making a bunch of opportunistic attacks to immediately score points that will never be taken away from you. Uh, the winter the winter building uh, destruction phase is another one where you really kind of want to prep for and that one is easier <coughs> easier to uh, to grasp what you need to do and you know the extent of the problem that you're faced with. Uh, Component-wise, never been a big fan of puzzle boards, but it mostly works here. Not seeing a lot of, you know, this is a 20, 30-year-old uh, game, and, and not seeing any real pooch in it or anything. Maybe it's been stored in better climates than I tend to live in. Most of my puzzle boards don't hold up that well. But Or maybe this is, you know, some kind of magical stock. Who knows? The cards are very flimsy and difficult to shuffle. Um, they also sometimes require you to look up certain things in the rules to see what their full effect is, uh, but overall, you know, they work. Uh, counters are serviceable. The problem with them is uh, the double printing. I found the backside for the damage, etc. just confused me as to which unit moved and which units didn't, which I like to flip over as well. Maybe using some other kind of marker to indicate the already used critters would work well. I can't go without uh, some kind of marker for that. The rule book, it's not organized terribly well, but it's short and fairly simple. Uh, there's a couple of places where you're going to have to look things up again. They're not going to stick in your head. And there the organization kind of shows the road. Overall, as a game... There's not a lot here to really recommend this, you know, other than <coughs> the sort of cartoon theme, right? I just got a lit carrot, excellent. Um, other than that, there's really not a whole hell of a lot. It does provide you with a somewhat different gaming experience, but I don't know that it's a good gaming experience. Um, in terms of, there's always little critters out there moving around doing things and you want to go off and womp them and you get a point for each one you want and then maybe you have some more general goal um that's a little different from what you see in most uh in most war games so you're not see which this is clearly derived from is some simple war games area movement and, you know the dice for attacks and everything so it's a fairly simple game but uh, there's really almost, uh, like I said before, almost no strategic thinking to it at all. You have no effect on each other's movement. You can't uh, block things off. It's much less of, um, of an interesting situation in that sense than, say, Awful Green Things, which is kind of the game that I feel like it's in the same space with. Even though this takes a full box... Uh, you could still, if you can throw this box in, you know, a shopping bag or whatever, you could still play this on a coffee table, uh, you know, at a coffee shop or whatever. You could go out. It's just not, you can't slip it into your pocket the way uh, that outstanding uh, old Steve Jackson boxes were able to do. And other games, too. Uh, ta uh, metagaming had their mini games in little boxes, although not quite as sturdy. <coughs> uh, PSR also put out some little mini games like that. 
So yeah, I, I'm left with a couple of real eh, feelings about this game in the sense that it doesn't really provide you with that kind of strategic view. But it does provide you with something that's a little different. It's almost like, you know, uh, I don't know, playing a, a trick-taking game of cards or, or something. And it's just, you're constantly being uh, presented with an opportunistic choice. I find that kind of tedious, the way this plays out. But I could see where somebody really would like that uh, in in comparison to a game where you have to make some sort of strategic plan as to yeah this is why I'm going here I'm trying to block off this terrain I'm trying to prevent no you got none of that the only thing you have is control of the weapons it's very fluid and um, and control of like the mailbox in terms of if somebody's already deposited stuff while getting down there and knocking them out of there so they can't pick it up is important but they can run in and grab something it's not far. It's not a far enough away objective that some characters usually can't get there. There's also a balance issue to this game, um, which yes, it's a multiplayer game, so people can kind of work together to stop a leader. But when you first play it, <coughs> you might feel that. Uh, you know, the farmer's doing okay. He's kind of in the middle of the road with everyone else, maybe lagging a little bit, because he has a hard time on the carrots, especially, when he's grabbing carrots. He has an advantage in planting them, a disadvantage in harvesting them, which is all obviously, you know, historically accurate, if you've ever watched that. <laughs> um, but the problem is, he has this humongous reserve of points in his buildings and those can only be destroyed in the winter now that humongous reserve could be turned completely around a bunny wabbit could get lucky or and use a bit of planning and have themselves the h-bomb set up so that they can drop it all right on the house and get a huge amount of points on the first turn of winter and win the game. That's not a particularly satisfying way to, to win the game, to tell you the truth. There's not a hell of a lot you can do to stop it. Um, although you can knock the rabbits, some of them, so that they're too far away from the mailbox to get at it. But initial placement, I think, allows at least one of the rabbit holes to be within reasonable range of, the, of of the mailbox. Let's see. One, two. Yeah, so from here or here, it's one, two, three to the mailbox. Now, if you're not one of the first two rabbits closest to the mailbox, you're not going to have easy access to it. And there's not much advantage to that other rabbit position, except in terms of starting holes, except during the carrot harvesting, he felt he was kind of on his own and could squirrel away his own uh, carrots, plus he maybe had easier access to the barn. So I, I don't know, but um, I guess the problem is twofold. One is the luck factor, that H-bomb can win you the game if you're the, if you're a rabbit and you have it set up right um, and you had to have drawn it you know and of course maybe you held it all game but maybe you got lucky and drew it late um, you know if you held it all game it's taking up some of your card holding position so it may have some cost for you to try to set that up it's probably worth doing to tell you the truth just because it is so potent, not in terms of necessarily just the victory points that you gain from it, but also, hey, if you're lagging because you're holding a card in your hand, that's apparent to other players that you're lagging. Uh, so they probably will not harm you when given the choice between two people to harm. Uh, I think everyone has to gang up on the farmer, though. 
And that's something that's not readily apparent on the first play. And I've had two first plays, well, maybe three. Uh, <laughs> I played it uh, opposed four player long, long ago, opposed two player very recently. And my wife loved it because I'm not sure why. I think the thematic aspects along with um, along with the simplified movement in combat type rules, uh, the excitement of the cards and all that. But I think also the lack of strategic planning actually is something she enjoys more in a game. And that's kind of alien to me, but, you know, too many of my games are going to require some level of uh, thinking about how do I get from a point A to point B. Here, there's not a lot of that. Um... <laughs> So yeah, I, I think uh, I think the rabbits have to right away start ganging up on the farmer, keep his score low, because he's got too many points in the bank. But then there's this huge possible swing at the end of the game. And one of the things that I noted was the rabbits can't get together, and this is what I was hoping would happen. They can't get together and cause damage to the farmer at the end of the game. Um, burning his houses down can't be a group effort because there's no opportunity for sharing the, the glory of it, right? Uh, whoever is the guy who drops the last weapon, uh, the last attack on a building, is the one who scores the entirety of the points. Um, conceivably, you could make some sort of deal, you know, hey, set me up this way and I'll finish that house off and then, I don't know, somehow I'll give you my weapons or something. Maybe in a three-player game or something that could be done. In four players, that's very hard to do. So you were really kind of left without this, this nice catch-up mechanism that I was hoping would be there with the houses. Anyway, um, I think it's kind of a subpar game overall. Uh, and much more so when trying to video it solo. But even knowing that, I wanted to have it because uh, it, it's such a cool idea, sort of. And I'll keep my eye out for Wabbit's Revenge. If I see a fairly cheap copy of that, I'll probably pick that up, too. It's just, a, it's just a matter of, you know, there's some games that it's hard to pass up on. <laughs> and anything more recent, uh, I know there's like Killer Bunnies or whatever, and that just doesn't appeal to me in the same way. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure why. It, it just... There's something... so connected with who I am to have... to take, you know, sort of the standard wargaming principles and apply them to something this silly. Whereas... If I start throwing cards into it, man, Munchkin's already a card game. There's just so many, you know, there's so many silly card games. There's so many, you know, that it just it just doesn't have the same draw as this does. This is kettle play. And it's not a terrible way to kind of introduce some people into wargaming, like, uh, because the rules are fairly simple. And it get some of the concepts for some of the simpler, simpler wargamish type stuff uh, in mind. So that, you know, you can move from this to like Warriors of God, which isn't really a war game either, but, you know, and then start building up their, their interest in things. Alrighty.